Hello and welcome back to the channel guys. This is the very first video in the Apache Kafka for beginner series on my YouTube channel and I'm really really excited to help all of you in learning Apache Kafka. In this first video in the series, we will try to learn what is Apache Kafka and what are the use cases for Apache Kafka. So please do subscribe the channel if you have not already and you can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. Let's quickly get started. The very first concept that we would like to talk about is event streaming. Now event streaming has three parts which are data capture, data processing and data transfer. Let's look at all three of them one by one. So in event streaming, the first process is capturing data in real time from various types of event sources. It could be databases, it could be sensors, mobile devices, cloud platforms, it could be anything. And this data is received in the form of a continuous stream of events. The next thing that we do with these events is that firstly, we store them so that we can retrieve them later on. Also, we perform manipulation, processing, and we react to these events, either in real time or retrospectively. Retrospectively means at a later point of time. Next, we might want to route these events to different destination technologies as needed. So event streaming ensures that a continuous flow and interpretation of various kinds of data happens continuously so that the right information is at the right place at the right time. Let us now see some use cases for event streaming. One of the very common use cases is to process payments and financial transactions in real time. Another use case would be to track and monitor cars, trucks or fleets in real time such as in the logistics or in the automotive industry. Let's also see a third example. It says to continuously capture and analyze sensor data from IoT devices such as in factories, in wind farms or near volcanoes and so on and so forth. So what is common in all of these use cases? Well, one or more producers are continuously sending some streams of data to our backend systems. And our systems need to either take some decision based on that data at that specific point in time, or they also might want to just store that data so that they can take some action on that data at a later interval of time. So these were some use cases for event streaming. And as you might have guessed by now, Apache Kafka is a very, very popular tool for event streaming systems. In the next slide, let us actually see what is Apache Kafka. So this definition is right from the Apache Kafka documentation. So they describe Apache Kafka as an open source distributed event streaming platform that is used by thousands of companies for high performance data pipelines, streaming analytics, data integration and various sorts of mission critical applications. So the main thing that concerns us here is that Apache Kafka is a distributed event streaming platform, which means that Apache Kafka can store various sorts of streaming data or event stream data for us, which can then be used or consumed by various sorts of consumers, either in real time or retrospectively. So Apache Kafka combines three very important key capabilities for us. Let us have a look at what they are. The first thing is that Apache Kafka allows us to write a stream of events into Apache Kafka and also read that stream of events from Apache Kafka. To do this, we have to follow a publish subscribe kind of mechanism. The next thing that Apache Kafka allows us to do is that we can store the stream of events durably and reliably for as long as we want. And the third thing that Apache Kafka does for us is that it can allow us to process these streams of events as they occur in real time or retrospectively. On top of that, all of this functionality is distributed, it's highly scalable, it is fast, it is fault tolerant, and it is secure as well. Also, you can deploy Kafka on your own hardware, you can use VMs, you can use containers, it can be on-premise, and it can be through a cloud provider 
like AWS or Google Cloud as well. Let's have a look at some of the features of Apache Kafka. So Kafka has numerous clients. You can write Apache Kafka code in Java, in Python, in Ruby, and so on. Kafka has a pull mechanism as opposed to a push mechanism. In a push mechanism, the producer of data is going on continuously sending the data to the consumer. Now, if the consumer of data is not fast enough to consume all of the volume of data that it is receiving from the producer, it may end up crashing or it may end up dropping certain points of data. In a pull mechanism, however, the consumers of data will request data from the producers themselves. So in Kafka, the consumers request data when they are ready to process that data. Next, we all know that Kafka is a distributed system and that has its own advantages such as fault tolerance and good scaling and so on. Kafka also provides us record retention as opposed to many messaging queues in which we do, do not get any record retention once a certain record has been consumed by the consumer. This retention policy can be set by us and it can be for as long as we want it to be. Again, like I said, Kafka provides scaling being a distributed system. Kafka has a wide variety of users and it has a great community. And the last thing is that Kafka provides us with very fast and real-time streaming. Now let us discuss about a data integration problem that usually occurs when organizations start getting large. So how does a company start off? Generally, it has a very few services, like it, say it might have a front-end system, a back-end system, and these might be communicating via, let's say, TCP. Now, when the company grows, we might have different front-end systems and we might have different back-end microservices. Now, as you can see, the number of data interactions have increased from one in the previous case to five in this case as shown on the screen. So what is happening when companies are growing? Data source and destination systems keep on growing and so do the number of data integration problems. And how would this company or this enterprise end up? It would end up in a big mumbo jumbo where so many systems have to talk to so many other systems that it just gets, it, it, it just becomes a mess. So do you see the number of data interactions, how they have grown in this case? As we can see on the screen, our company or enterprise has grown to have eight subsystems within the enterprise. And if each of these systems want to communicate amongst themselves, we have to write at least 28 different data integrations. Now, this is what is a common data integration problem in large companies. There is no single common hub for data that might be required or used by various services. So what are the problems we are facing? We are having to write nc2 number of data integrations, which is n multiplied by n minus 1 by 2. And that's a huge number given that the number of services within an organization grow very exponentially. Each new integration will have its own new requirements. And then there are data related problems like uh, some services may want to communicate using YAML, some might want to do it using JSON, and these contracts might even change over time, which in most cases will need to be re-engineered. But Apache Kafka thankfully solves this very data integration problem for us and saves us from a whole lot of trouble. Trust me, I work with Apache Kafka and it's very, very useful. So how does it solve this data integration problem? Well, any microservice or any service or any component of a software system which wants to produce some data can write that data into Apache Kafka. On the other hand, any service which wants to consume any data from a particular producer can request that data from Apache Kafka. In this example, let us suppose a lot of the data is generated by the microservices component. The microservices component can write this data or these events into Kafka 
and any other component of the system which wants to make use of this data can read it. Say Hadoop wants to do some processing on it, they can read the data. The analytics module wants to do something with the with this data or these events, they can request it from Apache Kafka and so can any of the other components. So instead of writing NC2 data integrations, we just have to write some simple code which either writes data into Apache Kafka as a producer or reads data from Apache Kafka as a consumer. Let us lastly have a look at some real world use cases of Apache Kafka. Apache Kafka is used by 80% of Fortune 100 companies. Do you see that adoption rate? It's like really, really huge and it is a big deal. So an example of this is Pinterest. So Pinterest uses Apache Kafka at a large scale for predictive budgeting for their advertising infrastructure. So what that means is that they are deciding the budget for their advertising in real time by making use of Apache Kafka. LinkedIn uses Apache Kafka to power various products like LinkedIn Newsfeed, LinkedIn Today, in addition to their offline analytics systems like Hadoop. Netflix, one of those super fan companies, uses Apache Kafka for real-time monitoring and event processing pipelines. And apart from Netflix, Apache Kafka is used in so many other companies such as Spotify, Uber, Tumblr, Goldman Sachs, PayPal, Box, Cisco, Cloudflare. And to be honest, that's not even the start of it. No matter the size of the organization, be it big or be it a very young startup, it is very likely that your organization uses Apache Kafka for some purpose or the other or it will use it in the near future for sure. So finally, what are you guys waiting for? Let's learn Apache Kafka together in this awesome course. Please do check out the link to the complete Apache Kafka tutorial series if you want to learn more about Apache Kafka with me. And before you go, if you like the content of this video, please do hit the like button. If you find the content of my channel helpful, please click subscribe. You can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. And like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you very soon with a brand new tutorial.